Hello, my friends. My name is Sean Sagard, and I'm the director of pastoral care here at Grant Memorial Church. And just like to take this opportunity to, to welcome you to this next edition of Psalms with Sean. Um, and so as we continue our look at the book of Psalms, today we are going to be looking at Psalm chapter 23. Uh, but before we do that, just a very special welcome to those of you who will be joining us uh, from our Grant Memorial Church family, uh, those uh, who are residing at the Waverly, uh, Brightwater, Linden Home Place, and Linden Lake Terrace, um, uh, also from Sterling House, from Calvary Place, and also to our friends from the United States of America. We've had some, some emails from, from those folks, so a very special welcome to, to you as well. So glad that you have found us and are able to study God's Word together with us. Uh, and just w regardless of where you are, if you're here in Winnipeg or you're in the United States or, or somewhere from around the world, I just encourage you that if, if there's a way that we can be a help and support, uh, if you would like somebody to pray together with you, uh, please do not hesitate uh, to reach out uh, to me. Uh, my email will, will pop up uh, at the bottom here, uh, and please uh, feel free to, to email me anytime. Uh, but before we, before we jump into today's study, uh, let's spend some time in prayer together, uh, asking God to prepare our hearts for what he has for us. Please bow with me as we pray together. Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to study your word together. And I pray for, for myself and for my dear friends who are watching. Uh, I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would help us, that you would help us to, to not miss what you have for us to learn from you. Uh, we pray that you would guide and direct us by your Holy Spirit. We're, we're so grateful uh, for your word. We're so grateful, especially for what we're learning here in the book of Psalms and the connections that you are helping us to make between the Old Testament, the, the New Testament, and also for us today. So I pray, Heavenly Father, and ask that you would guide us by your Holy Spirit. We pray together in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, so last week we finished up, and when I say we, I don't actually mean we. we. Uh, Dom Gibson uh, was, was filling in for me last week, and I was so grateful uh, to Dom for filling in for me uh, last week, and he helped us to wrap up Psalm 22. And my, my hope is, is that uh, Dom's uh, words were an encouragement and a help to you, and I am just so thankful for Dom for, for stepping in. So thank you, Dom, for, for doing that. I appreciate that. Um, and so today... Uh, we are in Psalm 23, but but also as I was thinking this this past week, and as I had opportunity to to look back uh, at last week's uh, edition, it made me realize that we've been doing this. We've been going through the Book of Psalms uh, for an entire year. Uh, it's hard to believe, but uh, but Psalms with Sean was was birthed out of out of COVID and. Uh, uh, typically, um, before COVID, I would be going to places like uh, the Waverly and Sterling House and Brightwater, uh, going to those places, leading a, a monthly a Bible study, um, and in some in some cases, uh, biweekly. Um, and uh, but with COVID, uh, of course, uh, that that came to an end, and so we were looking for an alternative. And so Psalms, that's how Psalms with Sean was born. So we're not entirely sure uh, whether Psalms with Sean will, will, will continue past this spring, uh, as some of those places have already uh, invited me back, um, you know, to, to potentially come back uh, as uh, vaccinations increase. And so, yeah, so we're not 100% sure, but, but, uh, but we will be doing this uh, till uh, mid-June for sure. Um, and uh, then we'll kind of take it from there. But as long as we are here together and studying God's Word together, you know, we'll just continue to, to move forward. Um, interesting that, that we have been at this for a year, and we, we, in some ways we haven't gotten very far. Uh, we've only got to Psalm 23, but, but I hope um, your feeling is the same as mine. I've just been so blessed by being able to focus our attention on these chapters in, in Psalms. They're just so uh, rich and so deep and so impactful for us to be able to study together. So my, that's my hope uh, for, for you uh, as well. Uh, so as we come to Psalm 23, uh, James Johnson, what, what James Johnson does is that he says this. He says, Psalm 23 was written by David about Jesus for Christians. This is an important place to start if we want to understand this comforting psalm. 
So James Johnson has actually broken Psalm 23 into three sections. The first is an introduction. Uh, the second, he's entitled, The Lord is My Shepherd. And the third is, The Lord is My Host. So today we're going to focus our attention on Psalm 23, the introduction. Um, and I think uh, that to what James Johnson has to share together with us is, is very important. It sets us up well in the coming, <clears throat> in the coming weeks uh, to really dive in deeper uh, to this psalm. But before we get to what James Johnson has to share with us, uh, let's, uh, let's read the psalm together. Psalm 23. I encourage you to, to bring your, uh, your Bible, your copy of the scriptures to hand. And let's read this. Uh, let's read this together. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Such a privilege to study this passage uh, in Psalm 23 uh, together, especially because of the ways in which this passage has walked together with each of us throughout the course of our lives. In fact, this psalm, Psalm 23, is perhaps one that most people are familiar with, whether they regularly attend a place of worship or, or not. That being said, I think that even though our familiarity with this psalm is, is a good thing, I think that it's important for us to also be open to learn what God has for us in and through this psalm as James Johnson expands our understanding and our depth of what is happening here in this psalm. So let's dive into to James Johnson, uh, his words of introduction, uh, as they help us to unpack a few different things. So the first thing that, that James Johnson wants to bring to our attention as we, as we look at this in, 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 at his introduction, the first thing that he wants to point out is, is that this is a psalm written by David. And uh, this is what uh, James Johnson has to say about that. He says, Many of us who love this psalm take the first words to mean God cares for me, and I'm so glad that he does. Um, just just a, a short pause there. And I think that this is, I think that this is so true. Uh, one of the things, one of the privileges that I have here at Grant Memorial Church is the opportunity to walk alongside people uh, in the context of, of, a, of a funeral as they're saying goodbye to, to a loved one. Um, and um, it's a very uh, uh, sobering time uh, for, for everybody who's involved. And Psalm 23 is perhaps the most common scripture that, that I get asked to, to speak on. And I think part of the reason for that is, is that this psalm has touched the hearts and the lives of so many people. So uh, when, when James Johnson says, many of us who love this psalm take the first words to mean God cares for me and I'm so glad that he does, I think that that's one of the reasons why people gravitate towards this psalm, uh, especially in some of the most troubling times of our lives. James Johnson goes on to say, we immediately take these as our words. But when we read the word my in verse 1, we should notice that David is speaking. The Bible does say that God's people are all the sheep of his pasture. But in Psalm 23, David says the Lord is his shepherd. Why does this matter? In the ancient world, a king was called the shepherd of his people. Israel, Israel certainly thought David was their shepherd. When David became king, the people said to him in 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 2, The Lord has said to you, You shall be shepherd of my people Israel, and you shall be prince over Israel. The psalmist in Psalm 78 says 
that God chose David to shepherd Jacob, his people. David himself was the shepherd of Israel. In Psalm 23, David is also a sheep. The Lord is his shepherd. A greater shepherd cares for him. I just, I just love the context here of how James Johnson is helping us to frame Psalm 23 and give us a, give us a, a context, right? Uh, because oftentimes when we, when we think about this psalm or we read this psalm, uh, we're putting it in our own context. We're not necessarily considering the broader context here, not considering the context of, of David as both a, you know, a sheep and also as a shepherd. And uh, that just gives it a whole nother depth uh, in, in this passage. So I appreciate um, how James Johnson is helping us to connect those dots. Uh, James Johnson goes, continues to say, by watching over David, God was watching over all of Israel. The life of the people was bound up in their king. When David prospered, the nation of Israel prospered. So Psalm 23 is about God caring for his people by caring for their king. Through David, God himself was the true shepherd and king over all his people. And you know, uh, as, we, as we look and as we read and as we study this passage, uh, we, we do very much have that sense uh, that, that God is the shepherd for David, but not only for David, but also for, for us, for, for you and me. Um, and so I can't help but, when I read this passage, I can't help but think of some of the ways in which God has so faithfully walked alongside of me, the ways in which God has, has helped me, the ways in which God has brought other people alongside to be an encouragement to me, the ways that God has provided for me in so many diff different ways. Um, like I've said before, like, like when I look back over the course of my life, I see God present over and over and over again. His faithfulness uh, to me throughout, consistently throughout the course of my life. Uh, and I am so, so grateful for that. So the first thing uh, is that, uh, that this is a psalm written by David. The second thing that James Johnson wants us to know is that this is a psalm written about Jesus. So James Johnson said, this is fundamentally a psalm about Jesus. David was not only a king, he was also a prophet. His life and his words point to Jesus. David spoke for Jesus in the opening words of Psalm 22. And we, we, we talked about that two weeks ago. As he foretold Jesus' words on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? We talked about that in Psalm 22, in the first part of Psalm 22. So if you want to, to learn more about that, go back two weeks uh, from, from this one. James Johnson continues and says, He also speaks for Jesus in Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. Like David, Jesus was both a sheep and a shepherd. As the Lamb of God, Christ entrusted his father with his life. Um, so amazing to have these, these parallel themes together, you know, themes that we find in the book of Psalms, themes that we find throughout the life of Jesus, right? As we, as we, we talked about this in the past, about how, how, the, kingdom, how the kingdom of Israel, uh, David's kingdom, is, is a reflection uh, in many ways of the kingdom of Jesus. Uh, and now we also have uh, similar themes, you know, David as a shepherd, as a sheep, uh, Jesus, uh, the ultimate uh, lamb of God, the ultimate sheep, and the ultimate, ultimate shepherd. Uh, so, so David is, uh, our understanding of David as sheep and, and shepherd, our understanding is of David as king, as we consider the kingdom of Israel, uh, is is a precursor, is, uh, helps us to understand what is to come in and through the kingdom of Jesus. Uh, so, so incredibly powerful. So this, this idea of, as, of Jesus, this truth about Jesus as the Lamb of God, um, we see that highlighted also in the book of 1 Peter chapter 2, 20, verse 23, which says, when they hurled their insights, insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges 
justly. Instead, he, Jesus, entrusted himself to him, God the Father, who judges justly. There is this theme that flows from this psalm and that also finds its way through and to the life and times of Jesus, and that is the theme of surrender and the theme of trust. Um, and it's important for us to remember that, not only remember that, but grab hold of that, that, that Jesus surrendered himself to the will of God the Father. He trusted God. He trusted God the Father to protect him, to walk alongside of him, to, uh, to, to help him. And we can do the same as well. James Johnson goes on to say, uh, Jesus is not o- only a sheep, he is also our shepherd. God took on flesh to become a lamb to save us and a king to rule over us. It says in Revelation chapter 7, verse 17, that for the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water and God will wipe every tear from their eyes. And also in the book of John, chapter 10, verses 11 through 15 and 27, It says, I, talking about Jesus, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay my life down for the sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. How powerful for us to see and know here in Psalm 23, a psalm written by David is a psalm that is about Jesus. Jesus as both sheep and shepherd. So the final part of this introduction uh, that James Johnson, the third thing that James James Johnson wants us to know uh, in this introduction of Psalm 23 is is that this passage, Psalm 23, is written for Christians. It is written for followers of Jesus. James Johnson says, Many people have taken false comfort from Psalm 23. They want to believe that God is their shepherd, but they do not listen to Jesus or follow him. None of God's blessings come to us except through Jesus Christ. Jesus is the great shepherd for God's people. If you do not belong to Jesus, God is not your shepherd. If you know Jesus and love him, Psalm 23 is for you. So Psalm 23 is by David, written by David, about Jesus for Christians. David describes God's care for us in Jesus with two main pictures, and we're going to talk about these in the coming weeks. Jesus cares for you as a shepherd and also as a host. I think that 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 final part of James Johnson's introduction is is so important um, because I I agree. Um, God loves us uh, so incredibly passionately and intimately, and he wants to know us. Uh, his love for us is, is greater than anything, anything that we can even put to, put to words. It's, it's, it's indescribable, uh, God's love for us. Uh, but in order for God to be our shepherd, uh, we have to invite him to be our shepherd, right? I think one of the things that we forget is, is that love is defined by choice. Uh, love can't be forced. Um, you know, I, I often say this when, when I, when I uh, meet with couples who are about to get married. I, I ask the groom, um, the, the groom-to-be, who told you to love your fiancé? And he says, well, what are, you, what are you talking about? Nobody told me to love her. I've chosen to love her. Exactly. Because love is defined by choice. It has to be chosen. It can't be forced. We can't be forced to love somebody. It does, love doesn't work that way. Um, God is the author and the perfecter of love. Uh, and so, and because of that, God has created love to, for, for, to be chosen. Uh, so God doesn't force himself upon on me. He doesn't force himself on you. 
he wa- he openly waits for us to invite him into our lives and my prayer for you my friend is is that you would choose to allow god into your life uh, we all need him we need his help we need his we need his love and if that's you today uh, my friend if if you have not yet had the opportunity uh, to choose Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I would just encourage you, uh, please reach out to me. Uh, send me an email. Once again, my email is going to pop up on the screen here. Uh, send me an email. Say, Sean, uh, I want to follow follow Jesus. Uh, and I, I promise to, to connect with you and, and help get you started so that you as well can start calling God your shepherd. Um, that is my prayer for you. And uh, I am so grateful that I've experienced that myself. Um, but please uh, reach out to me. I'd be happy to, to walk that uh, through together with you. For those of us who know God as our shepherd, um, just a powerful reminder today to, uh, to, to remember that, to keep that at the forefront of the things that we're going through, the things that we're experiencing. Uh, once again, inviting the shepherd to, to, to lead us. Sometimes as sheep, we're, we're pretty dumb. Uh, and, we, and I include myself in this because oftentimes I want to go my own way because I think I know better. But you know, my friends, the shepherd always knows the best way he knows the best path to get to the right resources, to get to the right sustenance. Um, and uh, this is a, a lesson that I've, that I've learned, um, you know, so profoundly and one that I'm so grateful for. My friends, uh, thank you so much for tuning in today. Um, just a reminder, uh, next week uh, we'll pick uh, Psalm 23 back up. Um, and uh, until then, uh, stay tuned. Uh, the hymn sing is right here after me. And before I let you go, though, let us let us pray together. Heavenly Father, I'm so grateful for such powerful words in Psalm 23 that remind us that you are our shepherd through Jesus. Heavenly Father, I pray for those who are watching right now. I pray in the name of Jesus, those who do not know you as their Lord and Savior. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would help them to, to know you, that they, that you would help them to experience your love and grace in their lives so that they can choose to follow you, so that they can choose you as their shepherd. Heavenly Father, I'm so grateful for your love and grace and peace and joy in my life. So grateful that you are my shepherd. And so, Father, um, I pray that you would continue to help me, help us, those of us who know you as our shepherd, help us to be your hands and feet of love and grace in the world in which we live today. I pray all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much, my friends. We'll see you next week. us today. Please join with us on these beautiful hymns of worship. Oh,
judgment made Were every stalk on earth a quill And every man a scribe by trade To write the love of God above Would drain the ocean dry Nor could the scroll One to thirteen, Hear me, Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Guard my life, for I am faithful to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I call to you all day long. Bring joy to your servant, Lord, for I put my trust in you. You, Lord, are forgiving and kind, abounding in love to all who call to you. Hear my prayer, Lord. Listen to my cry for mercy. When I am in distress, 
I call to you because you answer me. Among the gods there is none like you. Lord, no deeds can compare with yours. All the nations you have made will come and worship before you, Lord. They will bring glory to your name. For you are great and do marvelous deeds. You alone are God. Teach me your way, Lord, that I may rely on your faithfulness. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. I will praise you, Lord, my God, with all my heart. I will glorify your name forever. For great is your love towards me. You have delivered me from the depths, from the realm of the dead. Let's pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that you are a loving and good God. Thank you that you hear us when we pray. Thank you that we can bring our praises to you. And as we continue in worship, grant us joy in thinking on you, focusing on you, and then sharing that good news with others. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh. 
Thank you.